everyone. This is Ellie aka Looks from the Crypt and today we are going to be delving into actually my Instagram poll I did maybe like a month ago or so. How do you guys choose between two movies? I didn't list the movies but option one was a forgotten sequel from a popular franchise or a movie you probably haven't heard of. Unfortunately the first option actually won but I can't review it because I can't clip it. I guess if you guys are interested, if you'd still like to see me talk about it, let me know. But in my opinion, it's a movie that definitely needs to have the clips to understand its pure insanity. <laughs> so here we are today. We are going to be delving into Found slash Headless um, from 2012 and 2015 based on a novel and filmed on a micro budget. Uh, Found is a coming of age movie that meets an explo exploitation splatter flick, which is what makes it awesome. And then Headless is a lost movie from 78, which is the movie within the movie in Found. You'll understand once we get into it. Uh, I had to reset up because I kind of forgot to mention this, but uh, I watched Found on DVD. I own this. It also has the full and cut version of Headless on the DVD, but this is how I watched it. I know Found is currently streaming on Tubi for a fact. Uh, if it is, I can't remember. It's used to be at least on Shutter. I don't know if it still is. I'll, if it's still on Shutter, I'll like let you guys know down below uh, why I fact check that. However, Headless is actually the full uploads on YouTube right now. And I'll provide a link to that too if you want to check it out. If you want to hear more about these weird fucked up movies that I'm reviewing today, grab a snack, grab a drink, and keep on watching. <laughs> Found is from the point of view of a curious 12 year old named Marty just going through the teenager experience of figuring stuff out. However, he is also horror obsessed, which leads him to have very little friends and the friends that he does have don't even fuck with him. So we start the movie with a, a narration from Marty. He's snooping through his older brother's room as kids do, you know, just because cool older brother sibling dynamic, you know what I mean? Curious about what they're up to. Honestly, Marty's kind of a nosy bitch, but I'll get into that later. You know, one of the secrets he uncovers from being so nosy and snooping around his brother's room is that he is a serial killer. He stores decapitated heads in his closet in a bowling bag. Marty had initially discovered this by pure accident. The morbid curiosity grows and Marty then checks weekly and regularly to see what new head is there. Despite not being able to fight the curiosity, he is scared that one day Steve will notice that he's been snooping around and knows uh, if he doesn't put things back exactly how he found them. Marty, upon discovering this though, he keeps this secret because he realizes everybody has secrets. But basically Mar Marty's a nosy bitch because he knows that his dad keeps porno mags in the garage. Uh, his mom keeps letters from former lovers and then now that Steve is a serial killer and he keeps the decapitated heads as trophies in his closet. Marty is more or less he's just like a social outcast at school and he only has one friend named wow this is way too dark um that's okay we'll roll with it <laughs> I got like a new concealer it's from the same brand same shade and everything of the one I was using before but they definitely changed it. <laughs> but back to what I was saying, Marty, he's a social outcast at school. People don't really like him. He's shy, weird, and awkward. Typical thing. He has one friend named David who, even David barely even fucks with him or gives a shit. Like he has like a hard time being Marty's friend also. So to deal with this, Marty has found his escape and that is through horror movies mm -hmm. and graphic novels where he has entirely immersed himself in this world to escape from everything else which is something I feel like why this movie hits just because it I resonate with Marty in that way I've always been super into horror movies and all that and it's just easier to delve yourself into those things instead of trying to get people to understand you because people usually just think you're fucking weird I guess some people are afraid that if a kid watches horror movies he'll grow up to be a killer or a psycho but I'm not a violent person I don't even like killing bugs. I get good grades and I do what people tell me to. 
so they just shouldn't worry. Dad tells Mom, all boys are interested in horror movies and graphic novels. He says it's normal, and then I'll grow out of it someday. But if that's true, then I don't want to ever grow up. Not ever. But me either, Marnie, and that's why I never grew up. I'm just simply a 25-year-old woman who still collects toys, watches all the movies I want all day. Mind you, I guess I collect horror toys and trinkets and Halloween stuff. It doesn't really make it any different, but I never wanted to grow up. I'm just merely a fucking 15-year-old trapped in a 25-year-old woman's body who pays bills involuntarily. Mar Marty gets bullied by a classmate named Marcus. It's really weird, actually. Basically, Marcus is, like, pressuring Marty to show him his penis. And then Marty's like, no, that's fucking weird. He tries to tell everybody that they got into this fight because Marty tried to kiss him. I don't really know. I'm a little lost at this one. Marcus gets suspended. Marty gets sent home. And his family kind of just feels bad for him. Marty, well, you know, nobody's really home. Being the nosy little fucker he is, goes into Steve's room. There's not a new head here today. So naturally, the obvious choice is Marty then decides to blast some sick ass tunes, some metal, because you know Steve listens to metal, and uh, try on S Steve's sick ass gas mask. Marty gets caught uh, snooping around in Steve's room, and Steve's pretty upset, but then gets over it quickly because he wants to talk to him about how he didn't fight back at school today, how he needs to defend himself because. Not defending yourself is worse than getting in trouble, which is something I, I agree with. Despite their like weird family dynamic, uh, Steve really like does care about Marty and tries to like look over him in a way. Right, another degenerate. Stan! I stop calling them that when they stop acting like it. Marty, don't listen to him. The dad's racist, go figure. Fast forward to cheer Marty up a bit. His mom lets him have like a sleepover with his one and only friend David. Takes him to the video store to go pick out some movies for the night. And to be completely honest, I completely understand. M Marty, he has a, a supreme taste in movies. And also this video store fucking rocks. To be fair, none of the movies Marty picks out I think are real. But I would also choose them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyways, he is super drawn in to this movie called Headless, which, my God, like, me too. When I saw that cover, I was like, I need to know more. Well, what is this Headless you speak of? Anyways, brings it up to the counter. He mentions that the tape inside is missing, and they're like, well, tough luck, kid, somebody stole it. Is that mean, if I'm being honest, I'm struggling here, because when Wild did me fucking dirt, or no, no, when Wild Elf did me completely fucking dirty and changed the entire shade of this concealer despite the fact it's already the same from the same range and from the same shade, but it's completely different color. So I'm kind of struggling here, don't mind me, while I struggle through my nose contour. Marty comes home, he's going through Steve's room because uh, Steve did tell him that he could borrow some movies if he wanted or whatever. And then he finds a, a tape without a real case, you know what I mean? Just like the clamshell, no cover or anything. And it's headless, and which is fucking wild, right? <laughs> However, Marty, he opens up the tape and sees that there is a, a note with timestamps, assuming that this must be where he takes inspiration from. But if you ask me, I think Steve is just a fucking horror YouTuber. He's just like writing down the time to clip all the good stuff. Kind of looks like my notes, you know what I mean? Alex and Marty, they go from a honestly pretty basic ass, just 70s creature feature kind of thing. Just, you know, lots of titties, terrible effects to the very alluring, elusive headless, which is an extremely gross, gory um, splatter flick, more or less. David is sitting there laughing his fucking ass off and just going off about how corny and cheesy it is. And just like, man, this movie fucking sucks. You know what I mean? Like, like, why do we have to watch this one? Like, we're all hyped up because it's unrated, but it fucking sucks. Which, uh, I feel like we've all have had that moment. It's just going off about how fucking corny it is, you know? However, Marty's getting deeply upset, reasonably so, because he realizes that this is what his brother uses for inspiration when killing people and which is highly disturbing considering we are seeing 
a woman being tortured, mutilated, decapitated, and then he fucks her decapitated head. So naturally, he's pretty upset by it, thinking like, oh shit, that's like what my brother does. The lines between reality and fiction start to blur because Marty starts hallucinating the main protagonist as Steve. And at this point, when I watched this movie, I was kind of unsure. Since Marty is hallucinating this, it kind of made me wonder, like, just is Marty a kid with, like, a really big imagination that scares himself? Or, and he's convinced himself that Steve is a serial killer? Or is he actually? You know what I mean? Sitting here questioning, is this the movie that my brother takes for inspiration? Or is this the secret snuff film that he has... Uh, made himself. Marty then starts to ponder the age-old question. Does he like the movies because he's fucked up or did the movie make him fucked up? I said, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos for creating them. Dave is just laughing. The movie ends and he's like, man, this movie fucking sucked. Marty's like all tripped out and like David's making fun of him for being tripped out. But come on, David, like give the kids some slack. If I'm being honest, like in my opinion, like well, personally, I've been fucking hyped to have seen Headless at that age. Like, I've been like, holy shit, this is like the craziest shit I've ever seen. You know what I mean? It's still pretty extreme for like kids. Like, like I mean, like, for example, I know like all kids are different. For me, I was around that age when I saw Cannibal Holocaust for the first time. It was on YouTube, funny enough. I know I'm always talking about how crazy shit used to be on YouTube, but it was, and it was just a different time. Things were much simpler. You could fucking... Just do whatever you want on the internet in your like teens when you were like my age, like 25, you know? Anyways, I saw that movie for the first time on YouTube and it like changed everything for me. It was scary as fuck, first of all. The effects were insane for me as a child. In addition to like, it's kind of just what like it's really started my like, I'm still like this, like I have like an affinity for the forbidden <laughs> things that have been banned like very controversial like extreme media uh, that's kind of what kickstarted for me because I'm just like whoa people want you to not be able to see this at some point in time that was the case so I was like so therefore I need to watch everything like that <laughs> you know what I mean and then I got like obsessed with like the video nasties and stuff like that I derailed there what was my point Oh yeah, <laughs> not all kids are the same. So, uh, I mean, granted, it was kind of like a wild chance that I saw Cannibal Holocaust at like 13, 14. And that was fucking awesome as opposed to being like traumatized. Anyways, David's like making fun of like Marty for being scared of the movie, but he doesn't know what like Marty's like conceptualizing, you know what I mean, about it. Um, in terms of it being his brother or where his brother called inspiration from is like, Making fun of him, calling him a wimp. Just being really mean and being like, you know, Marty, it's like hard to be your friend. <laughs> and then Marty goes like, well, I'm not no, so, no fucking pussy. So he brings out the decapitated head of Marcus, the school bully, that bully Marty uh, from Steve's closet and then reveals Steve's big secret to David to kind of scare him. And he's like, if you tell anybody, I'm going to get my brother to fucking kill you. All that shit, acting all tough. Needless to say... David is speechless, gets sick, goes home. Honestly, I think this behavior was really out of pocket from Marty, needless to say. No need to bring the decapitated heads into all this. <laughs> you know what I mean? In addition to the factual, like, okay, you do this because you're upset David doesn't want to be your friend anymore. However, I mean, David really fucking doesn't want to be your friend after this. And to be completely honest, I don't really know what happened here. Maybe Steve, maybe that's like something like serial killers have. Like, you know, like people like say to like, you know, serial killers, they, they're kind of altered in a way because they have like, you know, or like a brain injury or like, you know, all the things that create a serial killer. I don't know. Anyways, uh, maybe one of those things is having like a fifth sense because somehow I don't really know. Steve knows that Marty knows and told David. At least since Steve is concerned about being found out he's probing marty about what he knows what he doesn't know what happened yada 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 leaving marty horrified uh because i feel like at this point this is like when the reality settles that 
his brother is fucked up and he doesn't know what he's capable of. So I don't even know how to talk about this, to be honest, just because it's so fucking weird when it happens and it's so out of pocket and just like, what? Like, what? <laughs> Steve reveals his motive to Marty, which is that he's fucking racist. It's, it's like dad says, they're infesting everything. Fucking mall, mom's church, the factory, the fucking government. I can't get away from them. You probably hate them as much as I do. Huh? What? Oh. <laughs> okay. Which I guess is maybe something I was like naive to because. Or maybe I just fucking went right over my head. Maybe I'm dense. I don't know. Because I know, like, we're aware that he killed Marcus, who is black. But uh, in my head, I was like, oh, well, he bullied Marty. Duh. In addition to all the heads uh, being found in Steve's closet are all, you know, of black people. However, I totally was thinking either A, it's a coincidence, or B, it's like, you know, the classic, t like, case of, like, the less dead, the term used for uh, people that serial killers target um basic communities that the police don't give a shit about historically as we know being like you know prostitutes people of color and like um travelers and things like that so i thought it was kind of like that kind of thing like oh, okay well he knows he's gonna be less likely to get caught if he murders black people because law enforcement doesn't give a shit and they're not gonna investigate it however it turns out he's just fucking racist and like inherited this racism from his father who like doesn't like him it's a really tense family dynamic and maybe it's perhaps like a way to like kind of win him even though he doesn't know but uh this is feels like totally out of place and weird and like it feels like it came out of nowhere and it's completely random i'm kind of curious since i know this movie is based on a book if it's kind of explored in a way that doesn't feel so like ah huh? i mean completely honest at this point this is kind of when the movie starts like drag a little for me just because mind you the it the acting's really bad in this like overall it's all very amateur which no complaints on that but this like whole section is pretty dialogue heavy so i'm just gonna go over it really briefly marty he is they're at like a church service of some sort and marty is getting bullied by a kid like some kids like calling him like gay and stuff typical like shitty ass like middle schooler stuff and then Marty, however, this time decides to fight back and defend himself after, like, Steve talked to him and told him, like, it's worse to not defend yourself as opposed to just, like, getting in trouble. And you're like, go, Marty, because he's, like, a little badass now. Like, you watch this awkward kid, like, be able to, like, gain some, like, confidence and realize he doesn't, like, deserve that shit. <laughs> and, like, even when, like, the parents are all like, you need to apologize to my son. He's all like, I'm not fucking sorry. Like, bitch, I'm apey kind of energy, which I definitely fuck with and is super funny. You are in big trouble when we get home, mister. What was I supposed to do? Let him keep beating me up? You didn't have to do what you did, Marty. Kids get picked on. I'm sorry it happens, but it's not an excuse to attack someone. You don't know anything. You don't even know what goes on in your own house. What? Do you even know how to be a mom? You messed up Steve and now you're messing up me. Oh yes, you're like lecturing your child about how violence isn't the answer and then slapping him. Parenting 101 from the woman who apparently raised a serial killer. You know, classic shit. We go home, uh, the dad's all pissed off, chooses to like be super abusive towards Marty because once again, we are the parents that parented a serial killer. <laughs> on me so you beat him up yeah i did you know awesome parent parents of the year award over here you know just trying to traumatize our, our children as much as we can <laughs> like i said um despite this like terrible fucked up family dynamic steve does deeply care for marty and doesn't want anything bad to happen for to him so he starts to try to like you know defend and stick up for him being like hey like fuck you guys like He's just a kid. Dad kicks out Steve. Steve come back, comes back that night uh, once everybody's in bed telling Marty, like, you know, please, like, don't get in the way of what's about to happen because something bad's going to happen. Yet, 
Dad wakes up. Here's Steve. Gets pissed off. Steve attacks the dad. And then attempts to rape the mom. I believe, like, Marty intervenes. I can't really remember. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. <laughs> then uh, we just hear, like, the sounds of, like, everything that's in that's going on. And it's pretty horrific. Get to Marty bound and tied onto the bed. Uh, with like a ball gag in his mouth. I would say it's not a kink shame, but it's kind of like a weird time to explore your fetishes. If you ask me, but whatever, I can't judge there. <laughs> and then uh, Steve, he walks in entirely nude, covered in head to toe in blood with uh, his classic gas mask on. At this point, I'm still not thoroughly convinced like Steve is a serial killer. Like, I don't know, this is just like your like classic like noise musician or like gore grind guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Marty's pretty fucking freaked out, you know, naturally he just like heard his parents get murdered and like Steve raping his mom and like torture and all this stuff. Like I said, Steve, he doesn't want to hurt Marty or do anything bad to him. So he's trying to comfort him, which for fucking obvious reasons, it's completely um, ineffective. Uh, Marty still freaked the fuck out. Steve, he gets up and he leaves in the morning just as we saw him completely nude, covered in blood from head to toe. Uh, Marty is still, you know, he just kind of left with his thoughts being bound and tied there and just pondering what the, what trauma can do to a person, which is kind of something we've kind of touched on quite a bit throughout the movie in regards to uh, movies and serial killers. Like, do the movies make the killers violent uh, or were they already that way and they happen to enjoy this kind of media? And then we close with a grand reveal of Marty still bound and tied and gagged, lying between the mutilated corpses of his parents. So oh, we have our finished look. I just said super basic considering I am like literally in my bedroom at 10 p.m. and just did my makeup to film. And I'm really glad this like whole concealer situation didn't end up as messy as I thought it would. Anyways. Now that we have our finished look, let's get into this odd fucked up movie. I gave found three and a half stars, um, but let me explain why. I know I kind of like ripped on it a little bit and like it doesn't sound that great, but let me explain my point of view and why I gave it this. The thing about found is that there is very poor acting and cinematography. However, I gave it three and a half stars and gave it the extra points because it is a fun and cute coming of age movie. However, this was filmed on like a micro budget of $8,000, which is, if you're not familiar, that's fucking like literally nothing, like literally nothing in terms of movies. So for me, that gave it the extra points for me because I could tell it was a film made for passion. You know, it's a passion project. Everybody who was casting like knew each other and things like that. Clearly all the money went towards like the effects. I can almost guarantee you that. I don't know, as like a true like nerdy ass horror fan, like shit like that like makes me happy. It makes me stoked and like, I mean, like cool, like somebody fucking wanted to make a movie and they did. And then the, we got something actually pretty cool. And the effects are something to, or that are noteworthy and worth talking about between our sequences and headless and then like the grand ending, the effects are awesome and really like abundant. Like the, they, they give you it all. So you like from horror nerd to horror nerd, like I respect it and I'm absolutely here for the situation. Rarely do I ever say this, that I would like to see a movie be like remade or revisited. However, in the special case I found, I would like to see that the cinematography and the acting is very poor. So to see this like redone, but with like just a little bit better, you know what I mean? Would be really interesting and cool. I feel like it could like serve a lot. And I mostly say this because between the bad acting and the cinematography, um, in conjunction with like the really heavy like racial themes, in addition to like the extreme like stuff we see, like I said, like fucking Steve fucking murders and like rapes and like mutilates and de desecrates the corpses of his parents in addition to the sequences of headless where we see a woman being like tortured and mutilated and then like the guy like necrophilia you know what I mean so when you pair those things together we get kind of what I feel is also the problem with like Megan is missing but not as terribly bad funny like if you've seen that movie you know like the entire movie's like a fucking joke up until like the last 20 minutes and you're like oh shit <laughs> you know what I mean you're like kind of like blindsided and that's kind of how this movie feels but this movie wasn't as like 
cringy teen dialogue. Was, also, I just love like the coming of age aspect with this. It really sits with me considering Marty is some of like a character myself and plenty of other lifelong gore hounds can kind of resonate with and see ourselves in, in regards to being like a young weirdo with little to no interest outside of weird, gory, fucked up movies, lack of friends, not a whole lot going on in the social life. And then that's kind of like what you do to escape and like enjoy your time. But Marty's dealing with regular teen stuff in conjunction with his fucking brother being a serial killer. And I don't know, just a really cute, charming story for me. Why? I don't know. It just, it just, it just hits with me. We can't talk about found without talking about headless, which is very important, which makes this whole story way more interesting too, because I'm glad I'm not the only person who had this thought. I just remember the, like the first time I watched this movie, I was like, holy shit, this like fucking movie within the movie looks fucking awesome. I want to watch this movie. And apparently a bunch of other people felt that way. Everybody was like, where the fuck is Headless? I need Headless now. We were left craving for Headless. By popular demand and like crowdfunding, we got Headless, which is so cool. I did watch Headless, which it's a movie that d doesn't, you know, oh, its own dedicated review. Yes, it's a full length movie. However, it's very reminiscent of like, a lot of like, I mean, we fucking saw the segment of Headless in the movie, which sums up the full length movie rinse and repeat we have like some of a story about like you know the origins of the killer but we're mostly here to see gore and crazy shit so and they do not let you down in that regard if you really like shit like that it's awesome uh it's very reminiscent of like the 70s grindhouse like kind of like exploitation aesthetic which is really fun if you don't fuck with like movies that have zero plot or like don't like gratuitous violence and torture D skip it like maybe found will be cool for you since you actually i mean it comprises like what like 10 to 15 minutes of the movie um it's mostly about like a kid struggling as opposed to the violence whereas headless is all about the blood guts and gore and definitely for um any gore hound that really likes to see like a fucked up movie i kind of wish it was a little bit shorter which I kind of feel about found too, but I just wish it was a little bit short because it's like I can only watch a guy kill, torture, and like fuck somebody's decapitated head so many times. But it's still super fun, nonetheless. I would say I give I give headless between somewhere between like a two and a half and a three. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. All the products I use on my face here will be uh, listed in the description there. All my links will be listed down below too. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know, uh, have you guys watched Founder Headless? What are your thoughts, feelings, concerns, all that good stuff? And in addition, if you have any movies you sit or site check out, just sound off and let me know. Thank you guys so much. This is Ellie Looks from the Crypt and I am out.